I can't do it myself and every hole's a goal. <laughs> oh no! No, we better not be recording. I swear to God. I swear to God, don't do that. No. Well, we... <laughs> it took a while, but we got there eventually. Good morning, Vietnam! I love the smell of my pub in the morning. Drinking, Thomas? And as well, so are you on the beat already? Yeah, you drink. Huh? Imagine that. Afraid I have jogging. water. I have water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was about, I've got a real, I was a real pint. It's my beer machine pint. I think I go to the pub oh, and just nice. get a glass. Uh, nice. What is that called again? Is that, I don't know, what's the word for it? The Peppy Draft. Is that what it is? I've seen other ones in it, but I think it's one that began with a K. The Krupp, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Is it decent? Like, does it put a nice mm. pint? It does, aye. You get a nuclear tea glass as well, and you get an even better pint. That sounds really swish. It's not bad. It's not bad. I've got some cracking paint glasses that are the old school, look at the handle and the checkered. Oh, I love those types of ones. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. So I've got a, I've got a stellar one, a goblet that's a nucleated, so it gives it more crisp. Also, the fact that you said goblet is it's pretty damn middle class, I mean, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes it any better, it's ten ounces in it. <laughs> Although, see, when we went to Italy, everyone kept saying to us, oh, we love tenants. And I was like, what? Because no. we said that we liked, like, Nastro Azzurro, because obviously everyone in Italy hates Coroni. Mm. But they kept saying how good tenants was. And I was like, oh, mm, <laughs> that's not my not, opinion. But... <laughs> not just tenants, but tenants super. My God. Tenants Why is super. That a thing? Tenants super is seen as a more kind of hybrid drink in Italy. That is absolutely insane. Because a couple of places we went to had tenants on draft, which I found really bizarre i was like that's i don't know maybe it, obviously it's a it, maybe it travels better i don't know maybe it tastes better abroad than it does here i don't mind tenants actually but i know what you mean it's, it's a bad reputation it's definitely not a high class slagger i just don't like the taste like i don't mind like a heverly or something but i don't like tenants and i don't like like fosters or anything like that like to or carling or anything like that to me no that delays fosters no, no yeah. delays <laughs> fosters and carling apart from football hooligans <laughs> I was going to say, maybe the Aussies like uh, Fosters, but... And even nah, even, even the hooligans don't like it, really. They just drink it because they think it's like working class and stuff, but it's not. It's just rubbish. Yeah, it doesn't taste nice at all. I'm, fair enough, I'm not a massive beer drinker, but if I had to pick one, I would. I like the Heverly. And actually, Chris has been drinking Alhambra. It's a Spanish beer, but it's quite a high percentage. It's like 11% or something like that. But it doesn't taste like heavy. It's really nice. Is that That's why we've seen it, seen it in a while? Strong, yeah, I... <laughs> Is that yeah. why you can't walk anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck's sake, eleven percent. That's been for you though. That's why they'll go nap nap in the afternoon because they had like an eleven percent beer for lunch. <sighs> My main concern is that next door is the gentleman renovating the house, and all day yesterday and today all I've heard is drills, bangs, thumps. I'm quite conscious that I can I can hear drilling just now. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I can only hear it because you've pointed it out. To be honest, I can, I can yeah. hear it, but it actually sounds as if. There's somebody in a cupboard. And they've, got, <laughs> they've got something over their mouth, and they're going, Ooh, "Let me in." That's what that I mean, like. I no comment on that. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, who have you been watching? So I've been quite bad with my with my TV viewing recently, but I have obviously been to see Elvis, which I loved, and the Black Phone, which we're discussing today. And then I recently watched an Italian documentary called Futura, which I reviewed for the site. And that was really interesting because I always think of Italy as this like gloriously sunny place with like, you know, really nice food, really chilled out. And actually it was a bit bleak. <laughs> it was about, you know, young people addressing their opportunities for the future and how they feel like they've kind of been let down by the Italian government. So it was really interesting and definitely, definitely worth a watch. It kind of makes you think about because you know how when you always go on holiday, you're like, oh, I can see myself living here. <laughs> but the reality <laughs> is always is always quite different. So that was that was good. The impact other than of that, tenant, that's the impact of tenant super. On the yeah, country. that's the that's the tenant super talking. But other than that, I've been mostly doing a lot of reading. I read Insatiable by Daisy Buchanan, which was 
the title should have given it away, but it was clearly a little bit more on the, the side of literotica as opposed to an actual book, which when I whipped it out in Costa at lunchtime, I was like, oh, this feels mildly inappropriate. I also read The Devil in the White City, the book about H.H. H. Holmes and how the World Fair came to Chicago, because I Martin Scorsese is meant to be turning this into a film, isn't he? So I thought I'm going to read up on yeah. it. And that was so fascinating and so well written. Like, I felt like it really brought you into what Chicago was like at that time, all the like socio-political stuff that was going on. And obviously the good bit, all the murders that were being committed at the World's Fair Hotel. So I read that and a whole other stack of books that I worked my way through on Honeymoon, including Under the Banning of Heaven, which you recommended to me, which mm. wasn't exactly light reading, but, you know, I do love my fundamentalist religions, so it was interesting. Yeah, it's pretty nice. grim. Isn't that that book? But there's also some bits of it that are quite humorous, where it talks about the history of the Mormons and that. It, kind of, it does say it with a bit of a kind of light-hearted slant. Oh yeah, tongue really... firmly in cheek when describing a lot of the stuff that you know is alleged to have happened at the origin of the religion. But I'm always kind of amazed at people who. I mean, it obviously takes a certain type of person at a certain stage in their life, but if somebody just sort of sprung up and declared themselves a, a prophet of God and you had to follow him across like half a country in really terrible conditions, do you know what kind of mindset you have to be in to go, do you know what? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pack up and my husband can, you know, take another few wives. We'll have about 20 kids. We'll all live together. We'll all be poor together. I don't know what state of mind you're in <laughs> when you're doing that. Maybe it was different back in the 1800s. I have no idea. Nice. Thomas. What about you? Have you been using your spare, your the few, the little spare time that you actually have? What have you been doing with it? Apart from touching yourself, naughty boy, don't do that. You'll go blind. <laughs> well, they say you'll go blind, but my sight's still pretty good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, uh... Do you know that? Do you know that's why cornflakes were invented? Yes, I yes. did know that. Yeah. I always thought that was an urban legend, and it only got confirmed to me recently that that's actually a true thing because they thought that bland food would stop you from having a chunk. <laughs> Oh dear, sorry, sorry, but not just that. Conflicts don't <laughs> exist as does masturbation, so really, who won out of it? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Although I don't think they're going to go with the whole will stop you from wanking as their sort of marketing strap line. <laughs> for the they really future. should. I mean, <laughs> I don't think it, people would buy it as much if that was a marketing slogan. You know, I think, I think Snap Crackle Pops would be a, a zing to it, personally. <laughs> <laughs> It's brilliant. You, know, you imagine we like, got to the supermarket and you're like, I don't think cornflakes, you know, will stop me from masturbating. Bang, I'd rather have a bowl of Cocoa Pops. And that could be the marketing campaign for Cocoa Pops. <laughs> I, don't eat, I, I don't eat cornflakes, so there, there's that. Uh, theory. Uh, <laughs> 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 but what have I been watching? I've been watching Seinfeld, actually. I keep kind of dipping in and out of it. I uh, watch Stranger Things. I've caught up at a halfway point. Of that season four that's been really good because I'm, i just wasn't that bothered about coming back i couldn't remember anything that happened in the previous seasons and i was like is this kind of one of these shows when i'm watching i enjoy it but when it finishes i instantly forget about it mm-hmm. i have enjoyed this season though it's a lot more kind of horror based and so nightmare on elm street uh, how much is here and there very unsubtly i mean i either think it's, it's it's very clear especially with some oh, of the guests they cool. have but i did start watching the boys unlike yourself who's waiting for it to be binged and yeah, I, I had issues with the last season. I thought it was really drawn out. I thought it was some really good episodes, but some episodes were just clearly filler. This, I'm not noticing that. I think everyone's clear, every episode's clearly serving a purpose, and they've really ramped it up. It's oh, more cra- it's more crazy, but it's also very, very dark. Very dark. That's, that's um, what I've been looking forward to, because I do love... Anthony Starr like I feel like he barely has to like it's almost just like a slight flicker of his eye and you're like oh my god he's going to go absolutely fucking psycho like he's so good as Homelander he really did in real life didn't he I yeah. wasn't going to mention that in case it was libelous but okay it's <laughs> <laughs> funny enough that when I heard about it people were saying that people were giving a hard time cancelling and that I was always oh, done thinking it's some sort of me too thing and then I read it I went just like a waiter in a restaurant I mean who's, who's not done that I feel like you need to start eating cornflakes Sammy or lay off the tenant's super. <laughs> <laughs> Book-wise, I've not really been reading much because I've been reading textbooks mostly, but uh, I have been reading uh, Farewell, Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. Oh, wow. Like most Hemingway stuff. Yeah, very much. Like, uh, like most Hemingway stuff, it's very, very easy to read, but a lot happening mm-hmm. behind the words, the, the, the themes in that. Film-wise, I've not been in cinema much, but I did binge-watch the Maniac Cop trilogy the other weekend. 
<laughs> so inspired by our last pod. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I, I just, I, so they're on YouTube. So I've got them in DVD somewhere, but they're on YouTube. I went and actually watched them. I watched the first two and thought, should I watch the third one? Nah, fine. And I've watched them and I'm like, oh, there's a uh, Sharp, the Watchman. What's his name again? The actor. Jackie. Oh, no, he mean bad. I don't know his name. Jackie Well Haley. Jackie Haley. Ah, oh, you know mm. something about it. Uh, he's in it. And uh, Robert Foster's in it as well. I was like, there's a strange cameo, which leads me on to the last film I watched at the weekend was uh, Alligator starring Robert Foster, which is a brilliant film. It really is. You look at me, Mary, going, No, but what is that? I don't know what that is. Alligator. It's kind of, uh-huh. that's what it says. Is it about an alligator? Have, have yeah. a guess, yeah, yeah. Is it like Jaw? Yeah. Okay, sorry, that was a bit yeah, of a thick moment. <laughs> <laughs> like the type of noir filler called alligator and it's some kind of like subtext and no, it's like a giant alligator that lives in the sewer and it was kind of it, it's a rip off of jaws i mean even the theme music is very similar but <laughs> this film believe it or not it's got an 83 percent rating on rotten tomatoes does it it's actually really it's a cult classic and it's quite critically acclaimed especially for the kind of film it is and tarantino apparently hired robert foster and based his character, based his character on Jackie Brown from Alligator, and he also got nominated for an Academy Award for that. So, wow! Mm-hmm. Alligator. I just know, his... Sorry, I was just going to say I didn't know if Alligator was like a code name, like see, it was like a drugs gang or something, maybe like, a, but no, it literally is just an yeah, alligator. Yeah, it's just it's just like an Alligator. <laughs> it's, it, it does it says the tin. It's a really good film, though. Uh, he's really good in it. The performances are good. Special effects are, are what they are, but it's all practical. Uh, Billy Maniac Cop. I mean, you watch it now, and some of the makeup's a bit dodgy, but I've seen these walking through a prison on fire. I, you know, it's a guy on fire attacking people. No CGI, no wow. computer trickery whatsoever. It's just, and the scene's quite long. So you, you can imagine how long they took it, but it's the best thing you see the guy on fire grabbing other people and hitting them. You're like, wow, man, I don't even know if they've got insurance for this. Because <laughs> you're also watching a B movie and you're thinking, yeah, you wonder how many columns of it and cut. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. Hemingway. In William Lustig films, nice to be banned and bring tenants. <laughs> so, <laughs> and nice. not in conflicts. John, about yourself? Well, I've had quite a lot of downtime, so I've been managed to catch up on cinema viewing. Last week, I think I had seen everything now <laughs> in Cineworld for the first time in about, oh, must have been about three, four years, because I went to see the Jurassic World film, which was oh, okay. It was all right. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It's just okay, which is a bit of a shame. Saw the Elvis film, which was really, really good. I don't know if you saw it. There was an article in The Guardian today about how accurate the Elvis film was. <laughs> Aye. You know, we is all, this we all the know same newspaper that. that gave it both two and five stars? Yes, exactly. Yeah. They didn't, obviously didn't have a third review to give it that sort of three and a half. So <laughs> I saw Good Luck to You. Leo Grant, the Emma Thompson film, oh, which was actually yeah. pretty good. It was a pretty decent film. It's just a two-hander about a, a widower who uh, is looking for a bit of sexual excitement. So she hires a, a sex worker and it's their meetings. And it's and it's all about her hang-ups and some of his hang-ups and things like that as well. It's really well done. So actually a pretty good wee movie as well. Is it sponsored by Kellogg's? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a Kellogg's moment at the end of it, but you know, I... and I also went to see Get Carter, the 4K oh, nice. restoration of it. Mm. I saw that at the GFT, which was brilliant because I hadn't seen that film for years and years. Well, and uh, Newcastle was grim and it totally grim, but yeah, really good film. Oh, the original, uh, I thought you were talking about the remake with Sylvester Stallone. Oh, this, oh I've, I've seen that, that's terrible. Oh. Why Why do you go to that one? Why would you not automatically just go, oh yeah, the original film, why are you even thinking of the remake? It's in his nature. To, I just had to bring it into the movie scramble sphere here that this film does exist. <laughs> yeah, no, unfortunately. Because yes, someday, somewhere in a studio for it, let's remake a Michael King film, would you want to start? It's the best <laughs> <laughs> Other stuff, I managed to see The Northman as well. Oh, which, actually good. Which we could talk about in more detail at some point, because I think that's, that's worthy of a, a long conversation, because it's fucking nuts. But on on the, the flip side of that, it's Robert Eggers' most accessible film, <laughs> which I, quite can't, I can't really get my head around. That was really good. I saw Morbius, which was rubbish. And no. I thought Morbis was all right. Oh, I just feel bad for Jared Harris because I think he's better than that. <laughs> yeah, aye. 
<laughs> and I saw the Downton Abbey movie, A New Era, which was surprisingly okay. I've never seen the TV show or anything, but somehow I knew I knew everything that was going on and I knew all the characters and people just obviously because it's old people talk about this sort of stuff. So you know and I hang about with old people. So <laughs> <laughs> were you just sitting there with like a scoring sheet going, yeah that butler's missed that teaspoon don't like the positioning of that for would be fired. Yeah. I, I didn't have high hopes for it because it was part of it was uh Downton Abbey goes on holiday. Which is oh, never a good sign for a, a TV jump, show. Yeah, you know. it's a bit jump the shark, isn't it? Yeah, but actually, it, it worked pretty well, even though there was that in it, and it was a bit set. Uh, it was to do with uh, the introduction of movies with sound in the well, early thirties and all that. So it was, yeah. it was actually pretty decent. TV wise, I've been totally into all the Apple TV stuff at the moment. Mm-hmm. So I watched Severance, which is. Excellent. I basically binged that. that. I waited till that finished, just watched it all. Really, really good. Uh, watched The Shining Girls as well, which was excellent. Is that? It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I really fancy it, that because it's Elizabeth Moss, isn't it? It's a wee bit slow, the first episode, right. but then it just picks up almost right away. Uh, once it gets in, it sort of guts of it and it falls through really nicely right to the end. It's pretty good. Watched the second season of The Morning Show which was fairly decent. Again, took a couple of episodes to get going. It was all around the sort of the start of COVID and everything because it was set round about that time. And apparently they had a whole second season all planned out and they'd started filming and then COVID hit and they thought, well, we can't really do this. And they changed the whole story or they changed wow. the big elements of the story to, to fit in with uh, the sort of developing COVID crisis and all that. So that's fairly decent as well. Try to think what else. Oh, For All Mankind, started watching that, the third season of that, which is wow. particularly good. I think there's been maybe about four or five episodes of it. It's still maintaining that sort of really sort of high level in between sort of science fiction, science fact and soap opera, because there's a whole sort of, you know, element of that. So that's pretty decent as well. I don't know if you've seen any of that, Thomas, have you? I've seen the first season. I thought it was it's excellent. I really watch. enjoyed it. Yeah. It's, it's a strange programme to try and explain because it doesn't sound that interesting and exciting, but when you watch mm. it, it's really good. Yeah. Where is that on, sorry? Apple. That's on Apple, Apple as well too. at the moment. Yeah. But as I said, it, uh, you can get a six-month trial through the PlayStation at the moment. Yeah. And it, it's transferable onto other devices, so you don't necessarily need to kick Chris out of the games room in order to watch it. You can watch <laughs> on whatever to... you, you can get access to Apple. I do need to see that because I want to see season two of Ted's Lasso. Oh, I also, I forgot, I watched Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness at long last and it was so good that I obviously forgot about it. (laughs) Same, actually. Yeah, Yeah. it just, it didn't, like there were some elements of it that I liked, but I I wanted an out-and-out kind of horror thing and it just didn't deliver on those levels. I'm I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about this, but I think that's one of the reasons why uh, Scott Derrickson did leave and end up making mm-hmm. the black phone is because yep. of the shackles of Marvel with the film. Yeah. Because I was the same as you. I was I liked the film for what it was. I thought Elizabeth Olsen was excellent. She um, was. I loved what it did with Scarlet Witch. I was expecting that. But for a film called Multiverse of Madness, I was expecting to be mad. Yeah, yeah. It, wasn't a, it wasn't. It wasn't awful of madness. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. it was quite. It's quite safe. Yeah, fairly safe Marvel film. You know, with a wee horror element to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some nice touches on it with some of the elements that I, I'd rather not spoil. Uh, yeah, some stuff in it which I was kind of aware of beforehand, but I didn't really pay attention too much of it. But then when it came up, I was kind of like, "Oh, oh, that's quite interesting. That's quite good." But in the the post credit scene, I had to look yeah. up who that was, and then when I looked up, yeah. ah, right, okay, yep, I get that. I understand. I know. I'd heard of the character was introduced to as well. So, yeah, that was pretty good. So, guys, you start with TV there. Then you watch uh, Obi-Wan. Yes, I'm going to finish that as well. Three episodes into that, just now. I'm just about to start the fourth one. I think there's six in total, isn't there? Yeah. And they're, they're all there now, so... Oh, yeah. are they? Right, okay. Yeah. My son's yeah, not in right. it, though, so, I mean... <laughs> How do you know? Because the time well, I don't know different. if it's not. Because the timeline's different, is it not? No? Means nothing though. Oh, okay, that's fair. You know, you know, there can be there can be more than one. I saw you uh, you posted a, a photo <laughs> two years ago. I had my baby. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
and the collections only get worse since he's on socks pajamas crochet things i take him out and about with me i mean it's yeah i'm clearly in need of some some therapy but that's <laughs> yep we move do what you can to get through the day let's face it <laughs> <laughs> book wise i've actually been starting reading some novels again for a change so i've been reading slow horses which I've also mm. watched as well. That's on Apple TV. Ooh. It's a, a MI5 drama, which is yeah, really, nice. really good. So I watched the show, which is only six episodes, and they've already filmed the second season of it, and they're going to do like four, apparently, uh, at least four. So that's really good. I really like Mick Heron. I'm also reading Soji, Soji Shimada, which is called Murder in the Crooked House. It's a a locked room mystery. It's a Japanese author, which I've been looking for for a while. It's on this Pushkin Vertigo mm-hmm. imprint, and they do a lot of translated mm-hmm. mysteries and sort of detective things. So I started reading that as well. And Douglas Lindsay, I don't know if you've heard of him, Scottish author. He's written three books, the D.I. Westfall novels. Um, just starting the third one oh, of no, that I just have, now. I have heard you mention that before. Yeah, yep. he also wrote the Barney Thompson novels as well, which the first one right. was made into a film with Robert Carlyle, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. which is brilliant. That's really good. That's another great Emma Thompson performance in there as well. And I've been reading a graphic novel called Sweet Tooth as well, which is the Netflix TV shows based on, yeah. which is pretty good. I'm enjoying the, the graphic novel. I haven't actually watched the Netflix show, but I'll watch that. And finally, I um, just finished a book by a guy called Katie Box, who's actually a friend of mine who wrote a novel a wee while ago and I got to he asked me to proofread it for some bizarre reason it's called Bridges Best Kept and he's just released it uh, onto Amazon now that's the oh, guy brilliant. that used the same cover artist that you use Thomas you put put him onto him and it looks pretty good so sort of a thriller that's set in Australian Outback in Perth and Singapore and it's, it's pretty decent um <laughs> it's his first novel. He's written a book about his experiences before where he he ran a drive through coffee place through in Livingston and then he wrote a book about it after he sold the business and it was all the basically if you're thinking of doing this, don't. It's a bloody nightmare <laughs> and all that. So uh so that's pretty good. Uh, I did have a, a wee bit of a laugh with him as well because I was asking if it was one of these sort of I don't know if you're like that, Thomas, you're a, a bit of a method author, you try and act out as much of the, the I bloody hope not. Quite, it's quite difficult with your novels, you know, there are bodies everywhere. But uh, but in this book, because it's a thriller, there's a couple of sex scenes in it. And there's one sex scene where the main character gets on with this woman in his penthouse flat. And mm. the base is, it, the way he describes it is they, they, they used every surface in the room. So I asked him if he actually did that. Just <laughs> for research like, purposes, yeah. He was like, no, I haven't tried it. I've not done it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, that's been me for the most part, but there's obviously lots of other stuff I've been watching as well. But yeah, I think that's probably enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look up Sexy Duck. I can't help it. Oh, no, I, have to, I have to know what this looks like. Oh, actually, scared. Scared. An actual, an actual duck has come up. Oh my God, is that a, is a rubber duck? But there's Bondi. a restaurant called Sexy Duck in Poland. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing the bonded rubber duck. There's a photo of a duck with his legs in the air. <laughs> oh my God. Right, okay, I don't want to go any further into Google because I feel like that might be falling down some sort of rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy's obviously seen some shit. I've seen too much. Was it the S and M rubber duck that you're looking at just now? Yes. No, it, was the, it was the Daffy Duck one. It was the actual. Oh, it was from an actual cartoon as well. It wasn't even like actual. <laughs> little, the jet. Have you seen that? <laughs> And then oh, I was with Daffy the Duck singing Sexy Duck to the Kiva Sex to my Sexy Back by Timberlake. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I've just seen the Daffy Duck one. I've seen that before. Yeah. I don't know what that says about me. That's what I'm saying. I thought it was familiar. You can get a pair of Y fronts with a duck on the crotch. <laughs> a duck and a duck. Nice. There's, do you know what, though? I'm convinced tails. that there's like a fetish. Like, there's a fetish for everything, isn't there? Like, you can literally find. As we discussed in our trip to the Raven, you can find uh-huh, something for everyone. Yes. Yeah, there's probably <laughs> some doubt there with a uh, sex doll rubber duck. Oh. 
there's a there's a thought and if there's not if that's not already a market it's something then you've got it cornered and you need to get that patented immediately <laughs> how'd i even approach that to the patent the patent's office you know it's like oh i'm a shark tank or something like that or dragon's den it's like so <laughs> everybody likes rubber ducks i play with them, <laughs> play with them in the bath <laughs> I just imagine you at a post dinner party and someone's like, so how did you make your millions? And you're like, oh well, <laughs> let me tell you a story. <laughs> See that duck statue in the, in the garden? <laughs> it all started with my refusal to eat cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem. People are eating cornflakes. Start looking at the rubber duck. Mm-hmm. That's it. And um, you just think, I can't do it myself and every hole's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! No, we better not be recording. I swear to God! I swear to God, don't do that! No! Well, the... <laughs> it took a while, but we got there eventually. Yeah, there's the, there's the intro to the podcast right there. There's the intro to the podcast and every other podcast from now on. Yeah. I'm just going to scramble really any listening. podcast that's done. I must admit, I did love listening to the deleted scenes because it literally just said you see me on Tinder after what I was doing. <laughs> Because that Futura came through, obviously, and I thought, oh yeah, I'll give that a watch. And it was it was yep. really interesting. It was those three directors that did it, and sort of halfway through shooting, obviously COVID and Italy had mad restrictions and stuff like that. So it was quite interesting. But yeah, the the youth of Italy are all a bit depressed. <laughs> I was like, oh, nobody thinks they're going to get a job. Nobody thinks they're going to be. Able to. I mean, in fairness, that's people everywhere, isn't it? So but it mm-hmm. was just it was interesting. Black Ford, and that's quite difficult to talk about in terms of yeah. you don't want to have spoilers or anything, you know. Yeah, because that's one fellow I mentioned during the, the podcast for spoilers, but I loved the idea that he was doing all these killings with his brothers next door. Yeah. And, and that the brother was on, and when you literally saw the brother's map, you're like, yeah, you have, you've cracked it, the killer yeah. is in there. <laughs> yeah, isn't that those four <laughs> wee jangles, yeah. That he just I know you'll see it in the canal, like the canal element as much, but I just thought it was quite funny, the idea and just cooked it, he's not. Well, he's, but he's building uh, his head all these like killings and he's just fucking out his face like playing like slow. Yeah, yeah, no, I get what you mean. It just it just took me out of it a wee bit, but I did. I get, I get, you, I get what you mean. That, no. Yeah, I do get what you mean. For, for me, I kind of did well, kind of back in levity to it because there wasn't a lot of it. No, hmm. it was, as I say, the oh. scene with the dad because I was like, that girl's really crying. I was like, this is making me really uncomfortable because she was actually screaming and I was like, oh my god, this feels far too real. It doesn't even feel like acting anymore. It feels really. But then, of course, she sort of calmed down when she took the, the bottle in her hand, and I was like, "Fucking drop it, drop it." <laughs> she was great. She was really good. It's when she cracked the village on the rock. She just don't I know. I couldn't believe that. And of course, she's this little sweet thing with pigtails, and she's like, "Come here, you fucking cocksucker!" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, "I don't." That seemed the, the the dad though. I don't know what was worse. The actual belting scene. I mean, she goes to sit down and watch the TV. Oh, and she just saw me, and I was like, "Fucking hell, man! This is this is grim." It was, it was. But then yeah, at the same time, you're also like, because that unravels that he's obviously lost his wife and he kept saying that, you know, your mum had these dreams and you're like, oh, do they think the mum was mentally unwell? And then you th- and he's obviously got no job and you're thinking he's a product of his environment as well. And it's not that he's acting because that's maybe always been his nature. It's just he's dealing with so much loss. It was, just, yeah, there was, there was so much in it. But that was, yeah. I love the character, the young Latino kid, I can't remember his name now, it was the, the, the tough kid, he was yeah. fucking, yeah. I loved that, I loved, I loved the idea of him kind of like, it was a scrawny kid, but stick up for him, I love all of shit with that, it's just dead basic, st- st- stand by me style storytelling, but, yeah, how you, Mary? Oh my god, this has been going on for 48 hours, I cannot deal with this, and I understand that he's bought a house that literally needs to be stripped back to the wires, but it does feel like the drills are going to come through the wall, and it's not conducive to actually be productive at work. That was something else I watched actually. I forgot about uh, the Slumber Party reboot, stroke remake. You mentioned that, and I. That was interesting. That was very interesting because, I mean, the first one isn't a great film by any means. You know, it's uh, it's the second one I think is more kind of popular because it's a bit more kind of crazy. The the Drother Killer is the, the mm. villain, which reminded me there. And this really inverts that male gaze aspect of it, and it does. It, it manages to do it in a way that's more effective. And all these gender swap films by not gender swapping anything. There's still the female cast all having a slumber party. Then they bring these male characters into it. And there's a scene, there's this really gratuitous shower scene for no reason whatsoever in the film of this guy showering. And it works in a kind of parody way because of how these films for the, the 70s, 80s slasher films always had this random shower scene for no reason. 
Mm-hmm. The girls open herself up. So it kind of plays in that, but it works really effectively. We V tropes. And it's I, I, above all that, it's a very entertaining slasher film. Where can you find it? So it's it's ah, right. Excellent. Good. Mm. Oh, Chris has been watching that Eli Roth. Oh, of horror on Twitter, and I happened really? to come in while he was watching the episodes about Mad Scientist, and of course it did The Fly and Jekyll and Hyde eh, and Frankenstein, and it was a brilliant episode. And I was like, "Oh, I really want to watch this series now because it, it, it." I actually I can't remember where I was coming in from. Oh, I've been at my friend's house, but I sat down uh, and I was like, "I want to watch this. This looks great." Uh, I just basically just I highly recommend that. 